Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. I'm Lucille, or Lace for short, and today let's talk about the gacha system. Understand it a little bit, do some fortune telling, and talk about what we should do with this information. As always, I'm making the assumptions that Crunchyroll will follow the Psy Games way and will just be very generous, uh, and boy are Psy Games generous, and won't screw anything up like reduce the rates or reduce the gem income or nerf characters, etc. Let me begin by saying this. If you want a character, you roll for it. It doesn't matter if you can save up 300 rolls by looking 6 months into the future if if you're gonna be bored and quit anyway, right? But if you want to play a game that's similar to No Nut November, but it lasts for 6 months instead, then let's continue. Let's start with the gacha. As we all know, the gacha system is your primary method of acquiring characters. So let me just give a quick summary. 150 gems a roll, 1500 gems for a 10 ball in which you're guaranteed a least a one two star and it features a permanent fixed pool of characters. In the future, there will be several types of banners, including the Raid Up Gacha, in which the character on the banner has a higher chance of appearing should you get a 3 star, the Platinum Gacha, in which you spend 1500 paid gems so that you can get a guaranteed 3 star, although it can be any non-limited 3 star, unless otherwise specified. Princess Festival Gacha aka prefez. The 3 star rate is bumped up to 5% as opposed to the typical 2.5% and there will usually be a limited character. And prize gaches in which in addition to the characters you get you also get like memory shards or uh, skip tickets or, uh, or some other future items that don't really make sense to us yet because we are still in beta. <laughs> Before that, let me quickly explain the concept of limited characters. So limited characters are those characters that will leave with the banner and won't end up in the permanent pool. So you can only get them then and there. They may come back and are usually themed by season, for example, New Year's, Christmas, Easter, I'm not sure if this one is Easter, Halloween, etc. For Precon, I guess you could also treat the Princess Festival as one of these seasonal banners. And I guess the most important thing you need to know about it is that typically there will be some game breaking or meta defining characters in some of these, so it's a pretty good idea to target these characters. So the one that stands out most is obviously the Princess Festival Gacha, especially due to the 5% 3 star rate up. And this is the right banner to be eyeing. For the most part, the Prefez characters have typically ended up at the top of tier lists, and for good reason. They're pretty busted, so... So if we have a quick look at a tier list, we'll notice that a bunch of these characters are actually from the Prefez banners. And Christina and Mwimi, I think? They're actually two of the first characters that come with the Prefez banners, and they're rated at SSS, so keep an eye out. Also with the 5% 3 star rate, you'll also hopefully be nabbing a bunch of stray 3 stars to round out your roster. Uh, if not, to then get Divine Amulets to buy Memory Shards so you can upgrade your characters. Of all the banners, Prefez, in my opinion, is the best time to roll, but then what are the disadvantages? Well, it's that it's quite infrequent. Right now, it occurs around like every New Year's, anniversary, half anniversary, and that's why I made that statement in the beginning. It may be the best banner, but if you're not going to last that long, then you just roll it lads. <laughs> so what other banners should you be looking out for then? If you actually pop over to the wiki or any other tier list sites, you'll actually see a bunch of the seasonal units. So, so since today is 19th of December 2020, I'll be talking from the perspective of, let's say, the first year. After launch, that is. So first year and three months assuming a March launch, since we're still in beta. The first up we have Jun. Jun is the best tank in the game for quite a long time, it provides a defense down and a small heal, which means that there are big synergies with Makoto. Next we've got Ilya, which is an AoE enmity type damage dealer, which essentially means that she just hurts herself to do big damage. We've got Summer Kyaru, who does magic defense shred and big single target damage. And then Christina, who's the first Prefez unit. She's she's still on top of the tier list even now. Great damage, defense down, and a great UB union burst. Because not only is it a guaranteed critical hit, but the attack itself is also guaranteed, which means that it goes through blind. New Year's Yui, a really good healer with barriers, and it's just the gold standard for quite a long time, probably until six stars come out. And I'll wrap it up with Mwimi, who is the second Prefez character on the anniversary. 
big physical damage, physical debuffs, and a really cool mechanic with her UB in which she gets a great sword and does even bigger physical damage. These are just a few of the ones that I'm looking out for. If you're keen to do a little bit of research, then you can just pop over to some of the tier lists or wikis and, and have a look at each of the characters that you're interested in. In my opinion, don't plan for the six stars as they are about a year and a half away. Remember also that there are actually collaboration banners. So for example, ReZero. So Emilia. <laughs> I personally always err on the side of caution and try to save for collaborations, but do note that some collaborations are actually region specific, so don't be too disappointed if it doesn't actually come to global. So what do we do with this information? Well, you learn to hodl. For most banners, there will be a 300 pull spark system, which means if you roll 300 times on that one banner, you will actually be able to pick the character of your choice from that banner. Do note that this spark or pity or whatever you want to call it, it does not actually carry across banners. So so if you want to successfully spark a particular character, then you have to hold on for a very long time. Some long-term ramifications may include getting kicked from guilds because you're not pulling your weight, slower progress, uh, and just losing interest in the game in general. Holding 300 pulls for a very long time, like honestly, I doubt it. I'm going to be able to do that. So let me just give you a quick summary because that was quite a lot to digest. First, you roll for your sausage. Prefez is the best banner to roll on, but it's quite infrequent. Watch out for limited units. It costs 300 to spark on that same banner. Remainders don't get carried over and get converted to skip tickets. I know it sounds like a meme. I thought it was a meme, but that is how it is. With that being said, that's the end of the video. Let me know who you guys are looking forward to because I'm looking forward to Mumi. She's so freaking cute. And she has like that great sword UB kind of mechanic, which is really interesting. And I can't wait to play it with her use her in my teams. If you know of any other characters to look out for, in particular the first year, let me know. If you like this video, drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe, you already know what to do. I will see you guys in the next video and thank you again for watching. Appreciate it. Bye bye.